This is the story of the legacy of Cain and the quest's original appearance in Diablo 3. After aiding the townsfolk of New Tristram to clear out the wretched undead from the runes of Old Tristram, it's then that Captain Rumford points us towards young Leah, Cain's ward, who asks us to aid her in finding her uncle, saying, Leah, let's find your uncle. We'll need to open the cathedral first. The guards locked it up before they were ambushed. Rumford told me they fought their way back to Adria's hut. The key must still be there. First, we find out the cathedral is where the fallen star lay and created an undead blight on the land. Now we know that the guards were pushed out of the cathedral and lost the key to it in Adria's hut. None of this bodes well for us or the people of Tristram. And we talk to Captain Rumford for information before we head off, who admits. When Leah told us the dead were pouring out of the cathedral, we quickly went to put an end to it. At first, it seemed we were succeeding, but, the, but they just kept coming. We, well, we were overcome. Captain Dalton and the men fought valiantly. They protected me. I am no soldier. I am, I was a farmer. I should not have been out there with them. I do not know how I made it back here. None of the others did. And now, somehow, I'm supposed to lead the militia. So, Captain Dalton sacrificed himself so Rumford could live. And Rumford is but a farmer thrust into duty. Dark tidings indeed. We could kind of tell he wasn't up for the job. We ask Rumford more about himself and he replies, I volunteer to help because it seemed the right thing to do. But I'm no leader of men. You were called and you answered. That's a simple thing for you to say. You were born to fight monsters like the Risen Dead. Me? I'm Although just Rumford a never sought this life out, fate seems to have thrust him into his newly appointed position. Let's just hope he fares better than Dalton. And with that, we head back through the waypoint to Old Tristram with Leah in tow to help us unlock the gate, previously barring our path. Here, let me open the gate. With the gate open, we see a militiaman's corpse who had previously been gnawed at by rats. The undead, no doubt, looking to do the same. And so we step into the dark woods in search of Adria's shack. Adria was my mother, but I don't know much about her. She died when I was very young. I was raised by Uncle Deckard. And your father? I'm told he was a great warrior who was lost when Tristram fell to the demons. After contending with a pack of rotted risen, we see more villagers left to rot or scattered about. Their homes in shambles. These zombies move like a plague through the lands. Heading east, we cross a small stream via bridge and see a shack that, unlike the others, still stands. This must be Adria's. As we tepidly step inside, we see dead militiamen Rumford spoke of, and Leah abruptly says, Look, a hidden cellar. Follow me. We call out to her, but she darts off out of our care and headlong down into the cellar. We momentarily take inventory of the shack. The east door seems barred. Potions, scrolls, and books are littered about, but there is no ambush we can see. And so we follow Leah below. There are dark secrets here. People said she was a witch, but I never believed it. Inside the cellar, we see grains and other supplies, various knickknacks, nothing of note. Yet, when we enter into the larger open area, we see a cauldron still somehow bubbling away. Rats scuttle out at our presence, and we know we're not alone. As we move to the cauldron Captain and Dalton. see what its contents are, it falls to the ground like a trap sprung. It's there we see the undead corpse of Captain Dalton himself, and presumably his guards, now guarding the cavern in undeath. We move quickly to kill his feeble minions, blinding them as Dalton pours at us. Dalton, being more powerful than his brethren, summons cold, icy barbs on the ground as we realize too late and are frozen on the spot, helpless as Leah attempts to contend with him. Thawing in the nick of time, we move in to slash at the guard captain. However, he also attempts the same icy trick. This time we're ahead of him and sidestep his attack before showing him the flat side of our shield to his withered head. His captain's helmet, partially rotted, doesn't save his face from being caved in or what's left of it. Regaining our composure, we go to speak to Leah who is searching her mother's belongings and she says, Here's the key and my mother's journal. What I've seen of it is disturbing. 
I want to know more about her, but that can wait. We need to save Uncle Deckard first. I will go. Stay here and learn what you can. Thank you. And so now we have a key to the cathedral and head off before taking a cursory glance at Adria's journal for further clues and it reveals. Aiden came to me last night. I suspected what was lurking within his troubled heart. I consoled him as best I could. Regardless, wherever he's headed, hell will surely follow in his wake. The shadows close in on Tristram once again, but like Aiden, I'll be go gone before they fall. Adria spoke of the legendary warrior Aiden, the son of Leoric, who felled Diablo and was turned himself into the cursed beast for his efforts. Strange that this was written after he had slayed the Lord of Terror and Adria seemed to have the foresight to have escaped. As we head topside, the previously barred door to the east side of the shack explodes open and we're forced to contend with a gaggle of undead. Adria's heart is so cramped we cleave her table in twine in the commotion. Heading outside, we're greeted by more dead militia who never made it inside. It looks as if their brothers must have been forced to barricade the door, poor souls. As we make our way northwest over an old rickety bridge, we see Old Tristram Road. Cutting a path through the undead, their kin line wait, with hanging townsmen as trophies dangling off the limbs of dead branches of an old rotted out tree. We're starting to sense a theme here. As we head north up the path, an undead trio feast upon a poor deceased villager, barring the entrance to the cathedral. As we put them down, we swear to the villager, his death will be avenged. As more ghoulish guards lunge at us, After which, we check the front of the cathedral and see it's open. Tristram Cathedral. The fallen star lies within. Moving to the east side, we also see a blocked gate with a chest on the other side and no way around. The west also, unfortunately, holds little else. We're then forced to move through the front entrance without any element of surprise and confront whatever is on the other side. As we enter, we see the pews literally thrust aside as the star had tore through the very center in a strange glowing crater where it must lay. After killing the shambling re-risen, we carefully drop down the floor below of the cathedral. There we see a glorious painting of a man, hand outstretched, reaching to the heavens. No expense seems to have been spared in this cathedral that stretches out in scope beyond imagination, yet feels more like a crypt. We avert our gaze to the bluish hole formed by the star and move towards it, saying, The star is close. As we head south, we see a pack of undead in a familiar scene, feasting on another poor wreck of a villager. This time, however, we use the chandelier above to smash down atop them before felling the foes. The design of this place is magnificent to say the least, and although somewhat macabre, we marvel at the glaring gargoyles and various gothic statues therein. It's then we are faced with carrying bats and kill the winged interlopers who seem to be electrically charged. We are then reminded of a passage in Kane's journal about the bats that said, Some foul new disease has taken hold in this land and the carrion bats are near the heart of it. Since returning to Tristram, I have seen their numbers surge. The evil forces that linger here give them strength, and I fear that the worst is yet to come. It's then we're faced with a grotesque demon. Stitched together, this rotund abomination moves with unnerving speed. As we move in to fell it, so too, almost supernaturally, the carrion bats move in, as if hearing Kane's words. The grotesque, when killed, explodes in a vile plume of eel-like slippery creatures that happen to be gut worms living inside its disgusting torso. The only saving grace of the ordeal is, facing the final bat, it drops a helm and we may have ample protection from the smell of any future grotesques. In the platform above, we find a scribe's lectern. Curious, we move to read it and it reveals a scroll of a man named Lakdanan from legend itself. 
My name is Lachdanon, and I am cursed. Once the captain of King the Oryx army, I lived only to honor my land and my king. No man has a greater love for his king than I had for mine, even as I drove my blade through his dark and corrupted heart. The mad Leoric was slain by Lachdan and his trusted knight, who in our Diablo 1 series, we face not only Leoric the Skeleton King, which is linked below, and also there's a video on us finding the cursed Lachdanan near the bowels of hell itself. After more searching, we also find a second scroll of Lachdanan's personal account of the events, and it reads, It was Lazarus, of that I am certain. He alone had the king's ear and whispered dark and evil magics into it instilling the notion of an imminent attack by Westmarch. Afraid to speak against the Archbishop, the councillors nodded their empty heads in agreement and sent us off to die. Lazarus, a legendary name that stand by most. After hours of fighting our way through the crypt-like cathedral, we find more undead kinsmen, but also undead split down the middle, and it looks like a battle took place here. With hope for Cain still remaining alive fading, we move to the door that leads us below to Leoric's personal passage and see Cain running for his life near the ledge of the crater. Foul minions, stay back! Back! May this ledge hold! The skeleton king! king. Gods, bring me his bones! By the gods, the Skeleton King himself. Cain is surrounded by undead royal henchmen and we race to face the first group lest they kill the old scholar where he stands. After we put down the first group, a second wave materializes around us. Led by a giant skeleton, Leoric's own personal executioner, Head Cleaver, who stalks us down, attempting to kick us into the pit below. However, as we regain our footing and about face so that his back is through the pit, we hit him with a shield bash that tears his limbs asunder. And as we approach a scared yet safe cane, he says, Oh, thank you. But why did you risk yourself for me? Your niece asked me to find you, and I agreed. Oh, it is wonderful to hear that Leah is well. I fear the worst. I learned of this secret passage through old maps I found. We must discuss the fallen star. Follow me to Tristram. We follow Cain out of the path and see the chest in the gardens is now accessible. Then we head back to Tristram as Cain instructs. I rescued the old scholar and learned from him that a creature called the Skeleton King stands between me and the star, but not for long. When we arrive, Leah, standing next to Cain, beckons us over and says, Uncle, you're alive! Thanks to you and your friend here. It was my duty to help. Now, I would know of the falling star. The prophecy of the end days surely points to it as a sign that the end has begun. Please, Uncle, not more of your stories. All that matters now is that you're back. And with that, the legacy of Cain is complete. But this mysterious fallen star, and now the re-risen Skeleton King, no doubt stand in our way to solving this mystery. However, that is a story for another day. If you enjoyed the video, please smash the like button and consider subscribing. It really helps the channel out. Also, thanks for watching. And until next time, traveler.